We live in a universe of patterns. Every night, the stars move in circles across the sky. The seasons cycle at yearly intervals. No two snowflakes are ever exactly the same. Tigers and zebras are covered in patterns of stripes. Leopards and hyenas are covered in patterns of spots. Intricate trains of waves march across the oceans. Very similar trains of sand dunes march across the desert. Let's dive deeper into the world of mathematics through Ian Stewart's book, Nature's Numbers. 400 years ago, the German astronomer Johannes Kepler wrote a small book, The Six-Cornered Snowflake. As a New Year's gift to his sponsor, in it he argued that snowflakes must be made by packing tiny identical units together. This was long before the theory that matter is made of atoms had become generally accepted. Kepler performed no experiments. He just thought very hard about various bits and pieces of common knowledge. His main evidence was the sixfold symmetry of snowflakes, which is a natural consequence of regular packing. If you place a large number of identical coins on a table and try to pack them as closely as possible, then you get a honeycomb arrangement in which every coin except those at the edges is surrounded by six others arranged in a perfect hexagon. Mathematics is to nature as Sherlock Holmes is to evidence. Sherlock Holmes can deduce someone's age, occupation, financial and marital status, from just a few looks at the object that that person owned. It's the same for mathematics. Mathematics can look at a single snowflake and deduce the atomic geometry of its crystals. It can start with a violin string and uncover the existence of radio waves. Just as the great detective was able to tease a coherent story from seemingly unrelated facts, so, mathematicians are able to deduce the underlying patterns from the facts that nature leaves around. We are still learning to recognize new kinds of pattern. Only within the last 30 years has humanity become explicitly aware of two new types of pattern, now known as fractals and chaos. Fractals are geometric shapes that repeat their structure on ever finer scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. A fractal is a never-ending pattern. Geometrically, they exist in between our familiar dimensions. Fractal patterns are extremely familiar since nature is full of fractals. For instance, rivers. This aerial footage from NASA of the Irrawaddy River Delta in Myanmar is a great example of the fractal branching patterns of river delta ecosystems. Fractals also exist in snowflakes. Even though a fractal is, by definition, an infinite pattern and cannot be measured, the Koch snowflake lets us see that even though the perimeter of a fractal is infinite, the area is not. As you zoom into the edges of the snowflake, you would find that there are ever new emergence of the pattern, but the size of the snowflake itself doesn't change. This kind of fractal is commonly found in nature when we observe coastlines. We can't really get an exact measurement of the landmass on Earth because the edges are not smooth, they are rough and variable. The Koch snowflake is a way of showing how the infinite irregularities can still be contained with an approximation of the whole. Driven by recursion, fractals are images of dynamic systems. The pictures of chaos. Chaos is a kind of apparent randomness whose origins are entirely deterministic. Chaos theory states that, under certain conditions, ordered, regular patterns can be seen to arise out of random, erratic, and turbulent processes. Take the double pendulum for example. A double pendulum consists of two physical pendulums, each free to rotate a full 360 degrees around its pivot. 
A double pendulum is a chaotic system because it is highly sensitive on the initial conditions. This means that a tiny change in starting conditions will result in a completely different motion. The simplest mathematical objects are numbers, and the simplest of nature's patterns are numerical. A very curious pattern indeed occurs in the petals of flowers. In nearly all flowers, the number of petals is one of the numbers that occur in the strange sequence 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and 89. For instance, lilies have 3 petals, buttercups have 5, Many delphiniums have 8, marigolds have 13, asters have 21, and most stasis have 34, 55, or 89. You don't find any other numbers anything like as often. There is a definite pattern to those numbers. Each number is obtained by adding the previous two numbers together. For example, 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. 5 plus 8 is equal to 13. And so on. This pattern with numbers on flower petals is famously known as the Fibonacci numbers. They are numbers in the Fibonacci sequence that was developed by Leonardo Pisano or Leonardo of Pisa. Numerical patterns, there are geometric points. Each tiny dot in the picture is stored and manipulated as a pair of numbers. How far the dot is along the screen from right to left, and how far up it is from the bottom. These two numbers are called the coordinates of the dot. A general shape is a collection of dots and can be represented as the list of pairs of numbers. Until recently, the main shapes that appealed to the mathematicians were very simple ones. Triangles, squares, pentagons, hexagons, circles, and so on. All of these shapes can be found in nature, although some are far from common. The flow of fluids provides an exhaustible supply of nature's patterns. There are waves of many different kinds surging toward a beach and parallel ranks, spreading in a V-shape behind a moving boat, radiating outward from an underwater earthquake. There are similar patterns in the atmosphere too, the most dramatic being the vast spiral of a hurricane as seen by an orbiting astronaut. There are also wave patterns on land. The most strikingly mathematical landscapes on Earth are to be found in the Great Ergs, or sand oceans, of the Arabian and Sahara deserts. In addition to patterns of forms, there are patterns of movements. In the human walk, the feet strike the ground in a regular rhythm. Left, right, left, right, left, right. When a four-legged creature walks, there is a more complex, equally rhythmic pattern. The way we walk, write things down, and even react to events are significant variables of our being. With that, it could be understood that patterns are detailed analysis of human behavior. Every movement of an individual is recorded, analyzed, and studied. Finally, there is another category of natural pattern 
one that has captured human imagination only very recently. But dramatically, this comprises patterns that we have only just learned to recognize patterns that exist where we thought everything was random and formless. For instance, think about the shape of a cloud. There is a very distinctive pattern to clouds, a kind of symmetry which are closely related to the physics of cloud formation. A large cloud seen from far away and a small cloud seen close up equally possibly have been the other way around. They will be different in shape, of course, but not in any manner that symmetrically depends on size.